Hi. So last week we introduced how we're talking about living our life with vision and purpose, and we're going to be looking at Nehemiah tonight. And one of the things I really love that we're going to be kind of, kind of focusing on is did you ever like hear someone sigh, you know, and you just go, ah, sighs just mean so much, you know, and I think mm -hmm. of that verse in the Bible that says that it's with groans, sometimes we pray with groans because we don't even know the words. Mm -hmm. You know, it says we pray with a tongue because it's like it's a spiritual language. We don't understand, but God just wants, wants us to just get it out. And I feel like when we start looking at Nehemiah's burden for the walls and Jerusalem being the way it was, he began to cry out. And we're going to look at that, like how when God puts a burden in our lives and we're looking at what's around us, even if we're just sighing before the Lord, even if we're just sitting in silence with tears, that's all a sweet offering to the Lord. And he mm -hmm. understands that and it speaks volumes to him. He's never, you're never misunderstood in your father's presence. Isn't mm -hmm. that a beautiful thing? That's so right. tonight we're going to be looking at the things that draw us to prayer and the purposes of it. And because our purpose may be to rebuild our distrust of vulnerable communities. And mm -hmm. many of us are in communities that are all over the world. It's not right. only what could be done, but what should be done. That's we, right. we need to be at least crying out to God mm -hmm. for the things that are before us. That's right. You know, uh, and what God does is he raises up what we call a champion. Mm -hmm. You know, someone that's going to take the cause. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't necessarily even have to be super amazing or whatever. It's just a person just, that just has just a burden. They just pull it. Yeah, they right? just push it. Mm -hmm. And um, they're willing to put their, their neck on the line. And they have the courage to act on an idea. And so that's what was happening with Nehemiah. And so he was fasting and praying mm -hmm. before God, you know, and, um, and so what he did was he just waited on God. But while he was waiting on God, he started recognizing as he started praying, God started revealing some things to him. And he says in Nehemiah 1.5, mm -hmm. he says, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, I you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commands, men, commandments, mm -hmm. please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now day and night for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept mm. the commandments, the statutes, nor Gosh. the ordinances, which you commanded your servant Moses. And so he was, you know, just acknowledging where yes. he was. You know, he was interceding. Because he word, wasn't just him. He saw that it was everybody collectively. That's right. He was, he was championing it, not in self-righteousness, like I'm perfect and everybody else is messed up. Right. It became his heart's cry as exactly. he looked around him. We have done this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so his goal was to, um, to meet up with God and to, for the purpose of other people, not only for himself, but uh, and to go, talk to God and, and, and give him a, a petition. You know, to uh, uh, this word entreat means to uh, bring a petition to a king on the behalf of someone. Mm -hmm. And that's basically, and it's, and it's with a sense of urgency and intensity. Mm -hmm. And that's what interceding is. It's, yes. it's an intense pleading, uh, a begging, an appealing to God that he would change something because mm -hmm. we're not happy with what's happening. Especially mm -hmm. now you're hearing, you know, just recently another thing, and I think it was Tulsa. And, and it's like, when is this thing going to end? Well, we need to be praying, Right. We need to be interceding for our country. <clears throat> yeah, someone was just telling me about that thing in Tulsa because, you know, I do work in a healthcare facility and it was in a healthcare campus that it was very well known and very top of the line for Tulsa. And apparently he had put a note in his pocket um, so he would understand why he did it. It was just he felt that his needs weren't being met. He was calling and he, he was in pain and he wanted to get to the doctor. He wanted to come in and he felt like he was being blown off and he mm. felt like he was being misunderstood. And I think it's a really uh, vulnerable time when someone feels misunderstood, right? And they're in right. pain and they're... And so he wanted to go t in attack with the wow. attack mode. Wow. And um, again, I'm sorry, I'm hearing this from somebody who's from Oklahoma who's telling me. Um, so don't quote me on any of it. But it just reminded me that when people... You know, there are people that get suicidal because they feel such despair. And there are other people that get homicidal. They get so angry that they can't handle how things are, that they want to start hurting people. And I think that on God's economy, when we see things that aren't right, we just need to cry out for God to intervene. We need to cry out and intercede for God's kingdom come, his will be done mm -hmm. on earth as it is in heaven. Let your right. kingdom reign. Let your name be glorified. You be lifted up that men would be drawn mm -hmm. unto you. So it's like when we intercede with that purpose, we're inviting God to just 
fix things, redeem things, restore things. So it's right. kind of an exciting thing. And, and that's, you know, the precursor to um, God's revival that he brings to many lands, many people. We need a revival, obviously. Um, you can expect God to intervene when you have taken time to intercede. I, I love that quote uh, because it's so true. You know, we, mm -hmm. we just need to intercede. The best way to influence people for God is to intercede with God for people. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Because when God changes them, they're changed. Right. I Things agree. happen, right? I agree. Mm -hmm. so, so one of the first keys that he did was to intercede. He aligned his heart with God. Mm. And in that prayer, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mm -hmm. mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. So he was aligning his heart right at that moment, you know, in, in prayer and just like right. making sure that he was in that right place. And it reminds me of, of uh, Paul when he says in Romans 8.31, he says, if God is for us, who can be against us? It is Christ who died and furthermore mm. is also risen, who's even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. So, so mm. even Paul was acknowledging God is on our side. Yes. Right? And, he, and, and Jesus is actually interceding for us, right? Mm -hmm. He's stepping in that gap, yes. right? Uh, Hebrews 7, 23 speaks of Jesus again. Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. It was talking about earlier that the priest would die, and so they'd have to be replaced. But he, he Jesus is to, alive, right, right? right? Therefore, he's all, able also to save forever those oh, who draw near to God through him. Confidence. Since he always lives to make intercession for them. So he think about always that. Lives. Our great high priest, he speaks to our heavenly father on our behalf. That's right. And right. I, I think he's, he's constantly engaged. It's always in the present tense, right? He's continually interceding on behalf of us. That's right. So and the, what are the results of the intercession of Christ? Well, in his intercession uh, in heaven, Christ right. sustains us. And it keeps us from many spiritual yes. dangers of life. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we were just praying for, uh, uh, we've been praying for this young man that went over town. And we were trying to get him some help. And uh, just, it went from bad to, to worse. And I was just so despondent. I was just so upset. I was like, God, you, you just really need to watch over this guy. And, you know, it was so interesting because I finally get a phone call. Uh, and, and so I said, let me talk to the guy that owns a phone. And I asked him, what's your name? And he says, Jesus. I go, that's what I needed to hear, <laughs> you know? And he says, yeah, he says, you know, I just like to help people. And he says, so I let him use my phone. And we were able to get this gentleman where he needed to go. That's right now, awesome. he's, you know, he's... And I can tell you, my husband was travailing. Sometimes oh gosh, we intercede with weeping or with moans and groans. Other That's times, right. we just travail. We pace. Right. We wring our hands. We can't sleep. That's we're right. just so distraught. You know, in Romans 8, 26, 27, it says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. when we don't know what we have to pray, but the Spirit, I love this, himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Mm -hmm. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. I just love this. All we have to do is position ourselves and align ourselves to be at the Lord's feet, That's to right. be in his word, to know, to release God's will, his kingdom. I love, I love that, that even when we don't know how to pray, the Spirit will intercede. Through yeah. our groans. I think yeah. that's just wonderful. It's like in our weakness, you know, and then mm -hmm. it's like he's comes through. Sometimes you'll have uh, these things that come out where you're just going, mm, and you don't even know. You know, it's just mm. like this groan that came from your heart, and you don't even know what it, you just, there's something going on in your head, but you, you can't even say it with right. words, but you have this groan. Uh, many times I, I would assume that that might be from the spirit that is kind of like travailing right. for us, right? Um, another thing that, that Nehemiah did is, uh, as, as he did when he interceded, was he aligned his heart with the others. So first it was with God, and then he aligns his heart with others. That's right. I like that. And confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we both have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We've acted very corruptly against you. You've not kept your commands, your statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded. So he puts himself and he aligns himself with his people, which I like, mm -hmm. because I, I, I don't like the separatism, you know. Right. I feel like... God came humbly, right? right? He came to serve the least of the brethren. That's right. So I think it's so important. So intercessors, intercessors recognize the depravity of man. That's right. How bad off man is outside That's right. of Christ. That's right. You know, in Romans seven eighteen, uh, Paul saying this. He says, "For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, mm. but for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. See, in the flesh, we can't do this, but mm -hmm. in the spirit, we can. Mm -hmm. And and so that's why intercession is so important. That's why we need to intercede for each other. Um, 
you know, when we, you know, a word that he used, Nehemiah used, I can, I confess our sins, my sins and the sins of my father. And, and when that word confess is basically to agree with God, mm -hmm. it's to acknowledge before him that which he already knows. So right, we're not like surprising him and saying, right. Hey, I did this. And he's like, Oh wow. Really? You know, he, he already knows. And so mm -hmm. all we're doing is acknowledging before him and saying, God, I acknowledge this, you know, you already know. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, so what effect does our intercession have for others, you know, in their lives? And so there's an example, great example found in Psalms 106. Um, it says, therefore, he said he would destroy them. This is where God had told uh, Moses that he was going to destroy Step the people. Step aside, I'm going to destroy them. That's right. And he would have done They're so. Stiff-necked yeah. people. And mm -hmm. the scripture says, and he would have done so had not Moses, his chosen one, stepped into the breach before him to turn away his threatening wrath. So he stepped in and says, no, no, um, mm -hmm. God, you know, I know they're, I know they're struggling. I know they're good, but please just be merciful to him. And so, so, and that's all God was looking for. He was looking for someone yep. just to stand in the gap, right? Remember Nehemiah 1, 8 through 10, it says, Remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there, bring them to a place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Amen. But if you return to me, I think that's a great promise, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He promises that no matter how far we've scattered, no matter how complicated it may look, that he says, if you return to me, you know, things are going to start to change. That's right. And what does that word return really mean? It's speaking of returning from a wrong road. It's mm -hmm. not just like turning, like making a turn, but um, it's actually a 180. Right turning all the way around because mm. you went down the wrong road, right? You've done that. I don't know if I, <coughs> I've done this a few times where I'm driving down the street and it's like, oh no. And I got to pull into some driveway to make a U-turn basically, mm -hmm. or try to make a U-turn. In Revelation 2, 4, or 5, I, I love this one because it talks about a heart that returns. Jesus is talking to a, the church of Ephesus mm, I love it. and he says, <coughs> I, you're doing all these great things. He says, but nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. And then he says something very cool. He says, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. In other mm -hmm. words, go back, repent, mm -hmm. which means go back, and then do the first works. Right. Just go back to what you were doing before when everything was good, right? And, and so, so what happens sometimes in our journey with God is like we kind of like lose that first love. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and, and love, that kind of love is a commitment. It's more of a commitment than just feeling all gushy inside mm -hmm. and feeling good. It's, it's more than that. Right. And so, 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 so he, he says, was, turn to me. Yeah. Right. And then keep my commandments. What's the best one? What like John 15, 12, right. this is my commandment that you love one another as I've loved you. Right. So when we have that in our forefront, we are drawing, we're trying to get everyone to get the blessing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and do them. Right. And so what's he talking about? He's talking about when we uh, turn around, when we return. Show me. Show I've me. always felt that right? way. Right? Right? You can say you love me all you want, baby, but unless I see it, I mean nothing. It's, right? Yeah, it's just mere words, you know? Mm -hmm. Timothy said, I exhort, or therefore, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, thanksgivings may be made for all men. Mm. Um, this is a very good, powerful scripture because it's talking about different ways of how we approach God. The word supplications means to make known specific sense of need. And there's moments that you can be specific right. with God. Right. You could tell him, this is what's going on, right. God. This is specifically what I need or specifically what I'm feeling or whatever it is, you know. Um, and then you've got your regular general prayers. Uh, it's a general word for prayer, prosec. But I like what you say. You say prayer is not the preparation for the great work. It is the great work. That's right. So many of us forget that prayer is as important. It's like sending missiles ahead of time That's to right. enemy's territory that you're trying to, um, you're trying to get their attention to get back in line with God. That's right. So intercession, right? The thought is to approach God on behalf of others right. and ask Him to take action in favor That's of right. something against a third party. Right. As Brown um, says, petitions is not only a word of advocacy, but also of empathy, sympathy, compassion, involvement to come to God with boldness. That's right. So that's, that's we're coming in boldness because we know we're praying according to his will. That's right. Because he wants us to, to, 
bring people home. That's right. He wants us to look out for the lost. That's right. He wants all to come to know him. That's so right. we're praying with confidence because we're praying according to his heart and his will. That's right. And then we and then we close it all together because we've just had a moment of being able to talk to him, recognizing that he hears our prayers mm -hmm. and he's, he is concerned. He, you know, he has empathy. He, he's understanding of what's happening in our society. He knows what's going on. We're mm -hmm. a lot of angry people that are lashing out against other people. And um, he gets it, you know. Uh, but but uh, it's important that we're praying. We're praying that, that hearts would be changed, mm -hmm. right? And so um, in Philippians 4, 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let mm -hmm. your requests be made known to God. And so, you know, right now when things can become pretty unsettled and, um, you know, this is a scripture that I, 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 I wish I would have really been able to hold on stronger last couple of days <coughs> as I was struggling to try to help this young man. Um, it's something that we have to grow in. And, um, but <coughs> the key is that we need, we need to grow in prayer, our supplication, thanksgiving. Let our requests be made known to God. Yeah, I just read that. So, you know, as we look at the state of our nation, our cities, you look at our families, and you're, you know the things that you're dealing with that aren't where you want it to be, go before the Lord. Don't be afraid to just pray with groans and tears and, mm -hmm. and knowing that the Spirit is interceding That's and right. that you, God's heart for that person um, is coming through your prayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great work to just intercede and pray for others. Amen. It's something you can do from your home, Amen. and it's probably the most powerful weapon that we have. Mm -hmm. So you know, like Nehemiah, I just read Nehemiah 1, just kind of look mm -hmm. over that prayer and just say, I, you saw the benefit, you saw what beautiful things came of Nehemiah's mm -hmm. uh, commitment to help mm -hmm. his people. And he's looking for Nehemiah's. That's He's right. looking for people that are ready to start rebuilding right. things that are broken down. That's right. And so when that burden is on your heart, like if you're burdened for our country or your neighborhood, um, your school, your family, whoever, mm -hmm. whatever, um, just recognize that that burden mm -hmm. uh, is an opportunity for you to take it take it to prayer right. and, and to continue to contend for Amen. the situation and the person. Amen. God has a plan and Amen. his desire is to change cool. things and to have us walk according to his will. Amen. And so just um, continue to pray mm -hmm. and trust that God is going to work it out and Amen. align your heart with him, Makes align your heart with song. the people mm -hmm. and be about the business of just lifting Amen. it up and saying, God, please Hallelujah. do something. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Spirit, Amen. break out. Break our walls down. Spirit, break out. I love that song. So, so good. See you next week.